Okay, what's up guys? Welcome back to our live stream. Tonight is the Bahamas Saw Shark. So, Pristiforus Schroderi. Um, a, I don't know anything about this species. This is a very little known species and I don't think there's any uh, footage or videos uh, on it. So this is going to be, there's a lot of information out there, but um, it's kind of like a rare shark. So it's going to be an interesting stream tonight. But what's up? Some, some people are here already. What's up, guys? Leave some comments in the chat. It's good to see you again. Uh, how, how you guys doing? Did you guys have a good St. Paddy's Day? I don't know if you celebrate St. Paddy's. Oh, hey, what's up, Howard? What's up? I Thank you so much for your artwork. This looks awesome. Um, I'm going to talk more about it when more people... Roy, Roy, what's up, man? What's up? Um, I hope you guys had a really good uh, holiday. Uh, I had a lot of fun. Uh, I, I had just a movie night with friends, but we watched uh, Dead Man's Chest, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Man's Chest. And it has nothing to do with St. Paddy's Day other than that movie is very green. Like, there's a lot of green in that movie, so. Um, but it's a lot of fun. It's it's lore of the sea, so that was that was our celebration for the holiday. But um, hope you guys had a good time. Um, we're listening to... I don't. Have you ever played the Monkey Island games? I I've played the first one a while ago. Oh, awesome! Glad to hear you had a great St. Patrick's Day, Howard. Or St. Patrick's Day, Howard. Sorry, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm like, I had like, this might sound strange, I had like a nap like two hours ago, and I think, I think when you take a nap like at the, in the end of the day, it kind of screws you up a little bit, so I seem kind of like groggy, it's probably why, so. But, um, but what was I saying about, oh, Monkey Island. So, I don't know if you guys ever played the Monkey Island games. They're pretty clever, uh, they're a lot of fun, and I thought it would fit into like, tonight's vibe with the Bahamas saw shark being a tropical species so um nice amazing oh yes <laughs> for sure Roy Roy let's go let's dive into the artwork uh this is uh like Roy Roy said amazing as always um and like actually honestly uh Howard I think the framing on this might be I really like the the scroll uh with like like how you frame this and like how you positioned everything like it looks really good and this might be um, I mean, that, I, if you don't mind me saying so, this actually might be your, your best framing yet, as far as the positioning of the shark and the ray, uh, like, like, the, the, this, like, this looks really great, so thank you so much for sending this. Uh, what is interesting, and I see, I, I really appreciate this fine detail, um, is that you included the bulge, um, on the snout for the, uh, Bahamas saw shark. Uh, what's cool is like the few pieces of art that we do have on this species uh, has this distinctive um, bulge or, the, or this kind of like out, um, outer edge. So I really appreciate that detail. That's super, super on point, especially since we in uh, consideration that we don't really I, I could not find photos of, the, of this species or like verified photos. There's a lot. Um, and I think what gets kind of like annoying on the internet is that there's a lot of photos attributed to this species, but they're not necessarily true. Like, a lot of them um, are saw fish, which is completely different kind of animal. So, um, so in light of, like, it's it's difficult to find any, like, uh, valid pictures. Like, this this looks amazing. So, well well done, Howard. Um, and, like, I really love the scroll detail. This looks really, really good. So, Southern Stingray are awesome, by the way. Um, we do get um, a couple of them in Virginia. They're more... I mean, like, they're, they're here. They're pretty common here. Um, and then they're very, very... Uh, this is probably one of the most charismatic ray species in uh, the tropics, like the tropical Atlantic. So, uh, but that looks absolutely amazing. So, well done, and thank you for saying it. It's super, super cool. So, <laughs> um, and I'm thinking. So, as a reminder, I, I w I'm going to be um, out at sea, <laughs> funnily enough, next week. Next week, so I won't be able to do a stream next week. But um, I do have a cool art idea. And it's going to be more of a showcase in the contest, but I'll wait to see if more people uh, hop online um, and before I announce that. So, but just just as kind of like a teaser, uh, there is I do have kind of an idea of cooking for a really unique new piece of um, art. Uh, it's not, it, I mean, it's, I guess it's, a, it's sort of a contest, but it's more so a showcase. I think it's going to be really cool. So, uh, more on that to come. So, um, so Howard did something really really cool and. Um, for any, any future viewers, uh, or like current viewers or fu uh, future viewers, uh, if you ever want to do this, this is totally fine. If you want to send uh, over any images related to um, the shark that we're talking about, because uh, like that, that's also a lot of fun to kind of like be interactive um, and and go over some things, especially since like I don't have um, 
I may not have all the images, or we might not have like online like all the images uh, available to us. So, um, so Howard sent over, and thank you again, Howard, uh, for sending over uh, some really cool uh, pictures of different kinds of saw shark. So um, um, let's take a closer look at this. This is very interesting. We'll start with the saw pic, uh, this like star shape. Sorry, star shape picture. Also, side comment. Like, I really, I'm, I'm gonna give myself a small high five. I'm really glad, like, this is this is not like a lecture or a show, it's more of like a chill space so we can all be together, because like, I'm, I'm like really groggy, <laughs> like, but it's okay, it's like, it's Monday night, we're all like literally studying together, so it's it's like, it's a good place to be that way, so, I don't know, I'm just small, stupid, self-promotion high five on that, but anyway, uh, Ikamalius, oh my gosh, what, okay, Ikamalius is a completely different genus, uh, let's look that up. I'll, I'll look this up on my phone. Ikamalius ensifer, rostral tooth. So, that looks wild. Collected in New Zealand from the Miocene, um, and taking a look at our handy chart. Miocene is, uh, 5.33 to 23 million years ago, so. Oh, cool! Uh, I love the sand being kicked up by Southern Stingray. I just saw your comment, Royal Roy. So, fun fact, when I used to live in Florida, um, I did a stupid thing where uh, I, would, I would go um, snorkeling quite a lot. And there was one day, like, I went head first. I just, like, dove in, you know, like, normal. Just, like, like just plunged into a seagrass bed right on top of a small stingray. Like, like I just, like, dove into the water and this, su this southern stingray just shoots out from under me and, like, completely scared and frightened. And it was like, oh gosh, <laughs> like, um, I mean, it, it was, it was perfectly fine and perfectly harmless, but it was also a really scary moment where it's like, if that was a bit closer, that would have been actually very dangerous. So, um, so random, random anecdote on that. Uh, neither myself or the Ray, sorry, uh, uh got hurt. So I'm going to look up the genus on this or, or the, to see what this is. Ikamalius. Ensifer. This is very interesting. The fossil forum. I'm just looking up a collection thing on my phone. Um, so it's a saw shark. Okay, the rostral teeth, uh, the, the rostral teeth of um, this species are very similar to those of Pliotrema, um, but in a, a Calmalius, the rostral teeth are barbled, serrated. Uh, so I think Roy, Roy, I saw your comment on the serrations. Good, good call on that. That does look pretty. That that looks pretty nasty. Um, um, which is, which is unique because like I think the other sharks. Oh no, no, the other saw sharks are serrated, right? Wasn't that one of those things that? Delineate them for saw fish because I thought saw fish had smooth teeth and uh, saw sharks are serrated teeth. Is that right on that? Um, I'm gonna have to recheck that. Uh, on both. Okay, sorry, but but in this species they're they're uh, serrated on both the interior and posterior edges. So there are a little. You can kind of see it in this photograph. Um, there are a couple. Uh, you can see that actually. It's a little grainy, but yeah, you can see a couple of those serrations right here more pronounced here, but you could definitely see a little bit of that right here. That's really cool. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Let's see. Uh, oral teeth remain unknown for this species. And I don't think I've seen more on this, but this is really cool. I, I'd be curious to see kind of the fossil history um, and how this relates. So just as a reminder, Pliotrema is an ex existing saw shark genus, and that is the six gill saw shark. So this guy looks similar to six gill saw sharks. And then um, our tonight saw shark, the Bahama saw shark is uh, Pristioforus. So that's a, um, kind of the predominant genus. So, or, uh, of extant saw sharks. Very interesting. So, uh, this photo is completely wild. Uh, it's really rare to get an impression or, um, 
just like vertebrae of a fossil shark species, but we have it here uh, for Pristioforus tumidens, uh, which I don't know. I don't. Uh, let's see how recent that is. But like, and let me make this bigger so everybody can see it. Sorry about that. I just wanted to zoom in on the name. Uh, okay, I think that's big enough. Can everybody see that okay? Let me double check how that looks on the screen. Uh, I should probably zoom out. I'll zoom out. Yeah, there we go. That probably looks better, right? Yeah, there we go. There we go. So, all right. The sawfish fossil, uh, fossils have barbs. Awesome. This is this is so so cool. And yeah, for sure, Howard. Like this, this is one of the best specimens of any kind of fossil shark I've ever seen in my life. This, this looks incredible. Um, let's, man, this is super, super cool. Well, sorry, keep clicking around. Prisioforce tumidens. All right, let's look up the history on this. Pristioforus. Very, very cool lived in a late cretaceous wow that is an old shark <laughs> like that is really really cool um let's see oh no no i'm totally oh, oh this is interesting so this is actually this actually might be given a different name this might not actually be pristioforus like our modern saw sharks i misread this this is pro pristioforus so this is like Latin pro meaning like before Prisioforus. So this is like a, a, a more ancient, uh, I guess I'm assuming it's an antecedent or ancestor of the modern Prisioforus. So that's really, really cool. Uh, lived in the late Cretaceous. It contains a single name spe species, uh, Pris Pro Prisioforus tumidens, which is this shark on the screen right here, uh, from Lebanon. Um, additional unnamed species uh, have been found in Antarctica, Japan, and Madagascar. Uh, Propristioforus was previously synonymized with Pristioforus, but more recent authors have considered it a distinct genus. This is extremely cool. Oh my gosh. All right, so okay, so I think I think this this might be a good time to sort of announce um, uh, the the art contest I have in mind since I'm going to be out of town next week. Uh, but. I think it would be really cool, because um, it's. I know it's going to be like a long gap of time, but I really think it would be really cool if uh, every, we each like uh, create like an artwork on a prehistoric shark, um, and then uh, if you send those over to me uh, through the Doc Jaws uh, website, we might be able, I'm curious if I can make a sort of super piece of artwork, like a super work, where it's like an evolutionary tree of everybody's individual artwork. Um, and I'm gonna name it Jurassic Shark. So I think it, I think it might be kind of a cool showcase. It might be the beginning of as we get more viewers, maybe more people sending fossil submissions to kind of see the bio, explore the biodiversity of sharks. I think it'd be kind of an interesting thing to do. Um, so I'll, I'll I'll elaborate on that more, but that's kind of where my head is at in terms of like if um, while while I'm gone, like if if we can all like draw like a fossil shark, um, at, like like to add to this like collection i think it'll be really interesting so um but i'll i'll, I'll uh talk more about that i think towards the end of the stream so uh for now let's zoom in to see more details on this genus this this looks so crazy look look how well preserved that's amazing that it's actually so cretaceous period that's amazing that this is that well preserved like at least 65 million years ago and you can still see an impression that is unbelievable. You can still see the condocranium. That is so cool. All right, let's zoom super, super in. Uh, I don't, I don't want to. I guess I don't want to lose the resolution because that's not going to help. But um, tell me what you guys think because that looks. These look pretty smooth. These uh, rostral teeth. Um, they look pretty, pretty smooth. And it's interesting compare, uh, comparing to um, the other species, or the, that other genus with the barbel teeth. Um, and again, this, this resolution might not be sharp enough, but... Ooh! Hey, Roy Roy, I've been thoughtfully what Megalodon looked like. Yes! 
yes, go ahead, man. This, this it's gonna be because it's gonna be two weeks. It's gonna be two weeks, guys. So that's gonna be a long period of time. So I think I think it'd be kind of cool, like a good good um, time to do like like. Yeah, like 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 uh, like a deep dive. Like 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 I think I think it'll be fun. Kind of like a fun art project. So uh, this is great. I'm assuming this is an I I could be misreading this, but uh, tell me what you guys think. But I'm assuming this is an impression of a barbel right here, like one of the sensory barbels. Man, this is so crazy. Oh my gosh, you can see the jaws. I just realized this. Look, so right here, um, I don't know if you can see my cursor, right here, you can actually see the jaw. Uh, there is, oh gosh, I forget, <laughs> I forget, like, I forget the technical terms for these, um, but there's the upper, um, the upper jaw, like the upper arch, this is the lower jaw. Meckles cartilage, is that what you call that? Uh, I'm not sure I got that right. There's, a fa there's fancy terms for parts of shark's jaws, so, Meckles cartilage. Uh, let me look that up. Michael's cartilage sharks. I got really excited because I, I used to know the shark shark anatomy pretty well, um, and then it's been a while. Either way, that's amazing that you can see that. Um, and again, uh, just just to kind of reemphasize, you got the upper. You definitely could see the upper jaw here. You got the space, which is the mouth, and then you got the lower jaw here. These these two, two bars of cartilage. That is so cool. Michael's cartilage shark. All right, here we go. We're gonna get there. I was right. Okay. So, the lower jaw piece of shark jaws is called Michael's cartilage. So that's that's this piece right here. This piece right here, like the 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 this is called Meckles cartilage. I just want to make sure I had that right. M e c k e l s Meckles cartilage. Very cool. Okay. Fun nerdy shark fact. So I'm assuming. Uh, so you got this like bulb here, and then like this kind of like bulb here, and I'm I'm like trying to figure out kind of what these features are uh, and I'm just checking Roy can see a little bit, uh, a bit of the vert yeah for sure um, let's see it's upside down yes good call oh sorry I keep clicking this sorry I keep clicking my Google Chrome icon and I'm just excited so yeah uh, good call you could definitely see a little bit of the vertebrae here uh, so good call Roy Roy and good call that it's upside down because um, I think Yes, I th right? Yes. Right, yes, because the cartilage is front page. Yes, okay. So sorry, I had, to, I had to think about that for a second. Because I was thinking about, like, if, how fossils settle, you know? Like, um, I was overthinking it. <laughs> so, super cool. And I love you could see kind of, like, how the... Uh, like, this is kind of the, the impression of, like, you know, where the gills are, and this is bulging out. This, uh, on this side, is bulging out a little bit. This is so wild. And again, you know, like all fossils, um, time, you know, of course, can disturb everything and move everything on unnatural places, so... Um, oh, this is going to bother me. I want to look up my shark anatomy toolbox because that's gonna really bother me <laughs> like, hold on the nice thing about sharks of the world and um i think most shark books have a pretty good guide on like a good basic guide on skeletal anatomy um and just anatomy in general but uh sharks of the world for sure so this is okay so this is the orbit this would be for the eyes, and then this is the nasal capsule. So this is this is for, okay. Gotcha, gotcha. Just wanted to re-verify that. Okay, cool. Sorry about that. Let's see what else we can see. And uh, shout out uh, if you guys see anything. Um, let's see. The large opening is the eye. I think so because of just oh. 
sorry, uh, just, just with the positioning, right? Let me, um, because the eye wouldn't be in front of the snout, right? Let me make sure I got that right. And we can actually, we can actually use your drawing for reference. In relation to the mouth and the eye, it is, that's pretty good. You know, that's actually pretty close. Let's see, let's use modern. Let's see, use, let's use like the diagnostic. Yeah, it's a pretty, it's a, compared to the mouth, it is a pretty big eye. And the snout, and, and the nose is in front of the eye. Or the snout is in front of the eye. Let's make sure. I'm bouncing around like what few images we have of this modern saw shark, but the basic anatomy is still going to be the same. Um, here we go. We'll use this one because this is a... Well, nope, that's not going to help. That's not going to help. I guess we'll use this one because that can kind of... Yeah, I think I think that that totally tracks because it's like you can see like you got the snout right here at the very beginning of the rostrum, and then the eye in the middle, which is a proportionally pretty enormous eye, and then you got the mouth, and the mouth is behind the eye, and the eye is about behind the snout. So, it's it's really strange to see from this, uh, where did I put it? Oh, here it is. From this skeletal perspective, but that that positioning fits where it's like this this is where the orbital process is. This is the snout, uh, this is the snout, or the, uh, the, <laughs> not getting these right. Um, the nostril, it right before, um, like, the rostrum, and then here's the mouth. So, that, that definitely tracks. It, it is really weird, it, like, seeing a positioning with this particular kind of shark, but that, that's what's tracking with that. So, it's pretty wild, so... Even online, a lot of people were confusing saw sharks versus sawfish. For sure, like like I, I totally agree. I was running into that uh, trying to find um, Bahamas. Oops, sorry, Bahamas saw sharks pictures. I was really having trouble finding anything. Um, and again, people are you know confusing them uh, and, and like like it's it's annoying how prevalent it is. So um, and like a shout out if you guys remember some of the differences. One of the biggest differences and the one that I always go to is like. The gills are on the side of the head. Um, the fins are distinctly separate from the head. Like saw fish have the fins fused to the head and the gills are underneath, but saw sharks have the gills on the side of the head and the fins are separate. Um, saw sharks can shed their teeth, uh, whereas saw fish cannot. The, the, the saw fish teeth are permanent uh, throughout that animal's lifetime, whereas saw sharks always uh, shed their teeth, which is super cool. Um, and then, like, did I... Am I... Do you guys remember, were the saw sharks serrated and the sawfish were not? Um, <laughs> I just looked up saw shark underside, it was a bunch of sawfish images. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, the internet, it's weird. It's like there's so many, um, there's so many good be benefits to shark science, like, like with what we have on the web. And then I, I think, I think, I think the benefits have outweighed the, the, the stupid things on the web, but there's a lot of stupid things on the web, and there, there's a lot of mistakes. I, I shouldn't say stupid things, because I think a lot of them are just mistakes, you know, but there's a lot of mistakes on the web, so, um, and I, I'm sure, I am sure both sawfish and saw shark scientists probably are infuriated with, <laughs> with the confusion between these two species. I didn't even think about that, but yeah, I'm sure they're infuriated, <laughs> like, that people get them confused, so. Uh, how are just like common incredible specimens m for sure let's keep let's keep going because we just we got the uh, head um, let's see what else we can see I can't tell if this is the lighting but it looks like there's striations here which could be an impression of the rays like the fin rays um, Fun fact, sharks do have, like, it's contrary to popular belief, they do have a little bit of flexibility with their fins. Like, in a sense, they are able to sort, slightly articulate their fins. Um, the most famous example, well, actually, there's two very famous examples. One we did talk about on the stream is the epaulette shark being able to walk on the seabed. So, you know, very much, very clearly being able to articulate its fins. 
Um, but another really uh, good example for kind of the classic shark body is the gray reef shark. Um, Carcharhinus... Uh, Ambly rhinchoids? Let me make sure I got that right. But gray reef sharks are very famous for changing their body posture, including their fin positioning, um, to communicate, stay away from me, you're bothering me, I'm angry. Like, like they, they, they have been able to... Like, like, there's been studies on their behavior and their body posture as it relates to um, kind of aggressive behavior. Uh, if you see... Carcar uh, I, got it, I got it almost right. Carcharitis ambly rhinchos, the gray reef shark. Um, there's been studies about um, how their body posture can relate to aggressive behavior, where if it's like, kind of like if its back is arched, if its fins are down, um, it's it's a it's a it does this body posturing uh, when it's agitated. So, uh, which is pretty cool. So, but that being said, like it's cool seeing and knowing like the fin. If these are fin ray impressions, um, like like th those like like shark fins have a little bit. It's nowhere near the degree of body fish, of course, but it is a little bit of articulation, which is which is a cool fact that not, not many people know. So, <laughs> misinformation just gets repeated. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Like like uh, in terms of like um, internet stuff. So, um, which is kind of hilarious because like, like <laughs> I mean like I mean I'm on the internet, but I mean we're also verifying everything as we go along. So. Uh, <laughs> Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, like, like for the most part, cause I, I had an interesting lecture a couple years ago where, uh, someone was asking me like what the single greatest tool for shark science has been, um, I guess for teaching the public in the past decade or so. And I honestly said the internet, like, like I, it, it, it sounds kind of strange. And I, I, I kind of took myself by surprise when I said that, but I was like, yeah, I mean, even when I was like a student in college, like we did not have nearly as much resource uh, resources or ne nearly as much uh, content available as far as shark research as far as like unique details and and um, I mean I mean like 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 easily accessible resources um, as we do today um, they're kind of hard to find like you kind of got to know where to go in order to get them but they're there you know like like a decade ago uh, they weren't really that um, common uh, so I re and, and to be able to like upload, uh, papers or to create these really cool projects like there's um, you know 3d skeletal um, or, or like shark anatomy 3d sculptures around or like you know some of the studies that we've seen in terms of um, mapping out, out shark biodiversity um, or the fact that the IUCN red list has updated so many shark species like that's amazing and again 10 years ago I didn't really have that no one really had that so um, I think even though I, I think any subject has a lot of misinformation, um, I, I think with sharks, like, the internet is a net positive overall in terms of, like, it's it's kind of amazing we have access to all these resources. So, um, that being said, there's a lot of shark YouTube videos that are bad. <laughs> like, um, like, when I try to find research, I, like, you guys have probably seen that, right? Where it's, like, it's, like, weird clickbait stuff, like, like this Photoshop small diver and a photoshop giant whale shark and he's like gonna f get sucked in his mouth or something it's like, there's a lot of good, there's a lot of dumb clickbaity junk on youtube um like like as far as shark stuff goes but then start sorting through that you do find some really good gems and content um like like uh when we were with connor with the Deer deerfield beach camp that's amazing like that was not a that was not able to be done um like like pre-youtube you know to be able to instantly check in on deerfield beach and see like how you know the wildlife is doing it's pretty amazing so that's my ted talk for today <laughs> I, I just went on a rant there <laughs> but um ooh, i never knew there were multiple great white species back then until recently yeah, yeah you mean like the uh the fossil species like the um we, yeah we had like 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 car uh Carcodon plicatilis, Carcodon hostalis. Same here. I didn't. I did not know that before the stream that there were there were multiple Carcodons in in life. It's super super cool. Oh, thank you. N nice to talk. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Howard saw your comment. Uh, very true. Our knowledge of the world is exploding. I really appreciate that. Um, I feel like we've had a weird. I feel like the early internet is famous for having niche, very carefully crafted websites um 
like the fossil die got dot com website that we've been using a lot like that 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 seems like kind of like an art like like it seems very similar to like the early internet like those unique websites and then it's expanded to like a lot of popular entertainment and a lot of junk with that and then within that it's kind of come back in a weird way to like this blossoming of more unique websites and more resources like so sorry just just to expand on, on your comment uh, very true that our knowledge of the world is exploding like for sure like like i i think i'm very confident that if i somehow wanted to switch subject i would never want to switch subjects but if i ever wanted to like take a deep dive into something you know like like archaeology or like um like uh i don't know archaeology is the first thing i think of like it like it I, I could find resources you know that that we just never had before and like really unique niche ones so i just think it's really amazing honestly it's 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 pretty wild uh you can see the pelvic fin here uh really nice pelvic fin impression and I love, even though this fossil is broken, I do love that just that nice curve uh, where it still kind of communicates that this this is a slender animal. Like this animal is a slender body and, and you, you can sort of visualize pretty easily what the rest of it will look like. Um, you know, j j just with like how that is, how that's proportioned in relation to the pelvic fin. It's super, super cool. Oh man. I might switch to our modern salt shark in a second but first do you see anything else anything else that might be standing out um let's see i will say and i can't i mean i i, do, I don't think there will be any way this could ever be preserved in any fossil but since we're looking at like the underbelly of a prehistoric shark I think it's a fun time to talk about the spiral valve, uh, which is a very unique feature among sharks that I don't think is talked about too, too much. Uh, but the spiral valve is basically, it's part of the, I think it's part of the intestinal tract. It's part of the, the shark's di digestive system, but it's a very unique feature among sharks that slows the digestive process to the point where the shark maximizes all the nutrients it can get from that the prey item it, it, it's 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 eaten, um, like like in in a typical digestive system like you know like you, you can get maybe like say sixty percent of the nutrients or something and then you know the the rest is like excreted or something. The shark's spiral valve uh, retains as much nutrients as it can during digestion so that you can get like 90% of, of all the possible energy from that prey item. And I think it's a really awesome feature and, and unique feature among sharks and, and like a really fascinating one that it's not, it's not talked about cause I, it's probably not as like attention grabby <laughs> as other features like the teeth or the fins or whatever. But spiral, the spiral valve is a fascinating evolutionary adaption for sharks. And I, I think it's something that should be talked about more often. It's, it's, one of the many things about sharks that makes them just the perfect predator, you know, just, just, just like the perfect, it's just maximizing efficiency for its prey items. So, Ooh, I, uh, Howard, I think there are two types spiral and good call. Let's, let's see. I, you might, I think you're right. Actually, let me, let me double check that. Oh, <laughs> we're already the 2000s internet is so nostalgic with its simple comic sans words and font. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I, I, I kind of, there's a part of me that like misses those days. It's weird. There's some days I'm like, I miss those days. And there's some days I'm like, nah, I, I like, I like what we, where we are at, you know, like just as far as the web, I, I, I like what we've become for the most part. But then again, I don't, I don't spend a lot of time like on social media or like, um, a lot of like. I have, a, I have a buddy who uses YouTube a lot and sees more of like the junk side of YouTube. And for me, like my channel is very, um, my channel, my habits are very, very niche. Like they're just very, they're so selective that I, I, it's a nice, it, the content I see is usually very nice. So what's fun if I ever like jump over to the, like my YouTube channel, you'll see things like, I don't know, wait, what will you see actually? <laughs> Hold on. Let's see. I remember when Pong came out, Dan, dude, Howard, Pong, the legend, the the 
it's like it's not I think it's not technically the first get video game but for all things considered it's the first video game that's actually really cool that is super super cool uh, oh Rory just made a comment the extra triangle on its left side is likely to be its dorsal fin let me let me double check this uh left side uh do you mean this right here like uh you know because you might be right i i that totally that totally could be it um because this might be i'm curious because it, it is a weird protrusion right here so do you mean this feature um that, I, that i'm kind of like circling right now <laughs> Dude, pawn, Pawn's a classic. Pawn, pawn's for sure a classic. Like, oh, sorry. Keep doing this. I'm checking the spiral valve uh, while waiting. Because... I do, I think you are right, Howard. Um... I'm trying. Oh. Okay. It's not breaking it down for me here, but it says intestine with spiral valves, and so I think if it it's using spiral valves plural, meaning that are there two? There might be two types. Oh, the spiral valve. No, no, never mind. Never mind. Oh, it has, uh, it depends on the shark. The spiral valve takes three main forms. A conico spiral valve, angled interiorly, a ring valve with numerous short turns, or a skull valve found in the Requiem hammerhead sharks. Um, the length of the spiral valve and the number of turns it contains depend upon the type of food typically eaten. Some, some spiral valves, valves contain only two turns, turns or there may be many, many dozen. Okay, okay. We'll have to we'll uh, check, uh, back, check on back on that. It's like, it's I, like, think, I, think, I think you're right, you're right, right Howard, Howard, that, that, that might, might, be, might be, it's not just one spiral valve, valve but it's like, there's like multiple features, 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 features or different types, like some of the spiral valve, valve. I, think, I, think, I think you're I think right, you're right. I don't know, so, so. Two forms, two forms of lights of light charge. Okay, okay. So that's so that that actually, that actually makes sense. Makes sense with that. So, so. Yeah, yeah, my gosh. gosh. Uh, I'd love to see that false one on the microscope for sure. sure. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, man. Spe and speaking of fossils, just to reemphasize, this this is an absolutely amazing specimen. So, um, I think we'll move on to the modern Bahamas saw shark, but especially since and, and I. Yeah, I keep clicking over on accident, but um, I'll go ahead and close this out. But uh, Howard, thanks again for sharing this uh, prehistoric. Wait a minute, wait, hold on, <laughs> hold on. Well, we got to zoom in on this really quick. What is this? Um, we won't be able to uh, shoot. We won't be able to see that in detail. I can't get a caption on this, but this is a really cool fossil too. This is this is a little blurry, so I might I might not spend a lot of time on this. Though, it also looks a lot. I mean. From one angle, that looks like a bony fish. Do you, actually, Howard, do you know? Uh, but from another angle, that does look like a shark. Do you, do you know what kind of fossil this is? Before I close it out, I'm just kind of curious. This top fossil. It looks like you could see the its tentacles. Let's see. Maybe, yeah. Uh, there's. It is interesting seeing like there's a couple of granular items here. It's hard for me to tell how much of that is the rock and then how much of that. But I think you might be right since it's these like little fine details here and there. No, no, but sorry. Uh, I'm just... Definitely looks like. Definitely looks sharky. Definitely looks like a carcharina shark. This is super, super cool. Um, oh. 
You know what's interesting? This has two distinct... Oh, well, actually, no. So we got the, this pectoral fins. I'm assuming... That almost looks like a dorsal, like a, a dorsal fin right there, but um, but again, I mean, it could be just how this is preserved, because uh, that also could be the pelvic fins. Um, the head looks amazing, um, and you can see the cartilage right here, like the lower piece right here, very clearly. The snout's very blunt. Uh, I don't know. That that looks pretty wild. Now, if it's from the same deposit, now this is kind of funny detective work. If it is from the same deposit as this, and I, I can't tell if it is, it looks like it is, but you know we can't tell. Um, they did say this is from the Cretaceous period, and I don't know if Carcharhinus does go that far back. Um, it could be a, an ancestor Carcharhinus, but just out of curiosity, let's let's see. Uh, and this, this is really, Wikipedia is, of course, as always, you know, not the greatest source, but with a grain of salt, it's a good handy quick look up for things. So Wikipedia is saying uh, Carcharhinus is 42 million years ago to, to now. And also, this is really cool. Wikipedia actually has this for most species. It has like a fossil timeline for most species of genera, which is a fun feature. I didn't think Wikipedia would have, but so 42 million years ago. If we look at our fossil shark chart, that would be Eocene. So, if it if if they're correct, like like uh, so, Carcharhinus looks like it might have risen in the Eocene. So this would be younger than this saw shark uh, pro uh, pro Pristiophorus because pro Pristiophorus is a Cretaceous saw shark. But actually, let's double check that on Wikipedia really quick too. Um, pro Pristiophorus. Mm. Late Cretaceous. Okay. So. Okay. But again, it's, it's Wikipedia, so I had to take it for a grain of salt. But um, quick look up. This might be. I'm curious if this might be like an ancestor, this guy on the top. So. But anyway, but good. Ooh, big, big cat shark. Oh, wait, okay. Lebanon is well known for fossil sharks and rays. Interesting. I w huh. I wonder, um, that's really interesting because it's right, isn't Lebanon right on the Mediterranean, right? So I, Lebanon. Yeah, right on the Mediterranean. So, I forget specifically, because uh, the Mediterranean... I wonder if this will be also on Wikipedia. <laughs> this is so bad, but there we go. No, this this would this would be too young. Okay. So this is really random. Um, so the sharks that we're talking about from Lebanon are super, super, super old. So this article I just looked up on an event called the Mycenaean Salinity Crisis would not would have nothing to do with these sharks but uh my brain just kind of went into a funny direction because lebanon and mediterranean and a very important event that did oops, sorry impact uh, biodiversity a long time ago so um so i'm curious what lebanon looked like during the cretaceous period and i'm assuming it was like um i mean it clearly was underwater i'm assuming like how deep it was and what the environment or like i'm wondering how deep that was and what the environment was um so but i do want to point out something that happened much more recently uh, as far as uh, ecological time so during the miocene is a Mycen uh, mycenian salinity crisis um and i talked about it on one of the streams a while ago but this was a really cool event like or kind of a really cool catastrophic event where um the mediterranean basically closed up and it created this insane environment that was really salty that killed a lot of the marine biodiversity. It was, a ma it was I shouldn't say a massive extinction event, but like a pretty critical extinction event that forever changed what the Mediterranean looked like um, as far as what kind of species populate the region. And I believe the crisis did open the way up for carcharhinid sharks, or car sorry, carcharhiniform sharks, so like... Um, 
uh, carcharinids like like the ground sharks or spheenids like the hammerheads. It opened up a uh, ecological niche when the sea levels rose again, and the, med the access to the Mediterranean was uh, reopened. Um, and those sharks were able to come in and take the place of the sharks that died out because of the uh, evaporation. Um, so, like, long story short, the Mediterranean evapor evaporated really rapidly, more more quickly than many of the species could evolve, or could evolve, and many of those species died out. And then, when the sea levels rose again, um, it just basically left the door open for new species to come in and change the shape of the Mediterranean forever. It's a really cool event. Um, like, it's it's a really cool event when it comes to like biodiversity. So, fun little uh, trivia for that. So. Um, look at it again, it kind of looks like a big cat shark, getting back to our fossil. It does, and it would just act really cool if it would be, because, like, that would still be, that, that would be the same order as the first guess of, uh, a Carcharhinus, like, you know, same order. So, um, let's see how old, wait, wait, <laughs> oh my gosh, sorry, the music freaked me out, I just heard a weird noise, <laughs> freak me out I thought, so, I thought somebody was in my apartment it was really creepy uh <laughs> anyway let's see how old carcharinoforms are wikipedia it's such a guilty pleasure because yeah you cannot teach on this but it's kind of like you know sort of helpful Ooh, okay middle to late jurassic so carcharinoforms rose in the middle of to like Jurassic. So it could be, Roy, it could be a Carcharinoform shark. It totally could be. Like, as far as the timeline goes. So that that would track. So that would be really cool if it is. So, all right. Um, so I'm going to X out of the fossils here. And again, thanks, Howard, for sending these over. These are super, super cool. And um, even though, like, like it's almost 10 o'clock, it still is totally fine because the shark that we're talking about tonight is not this one <laughs> is a i shouldn't say it's a rare species but it's definitely not a well-known species so the yeah, we did not miss a lot of content as far as our modern bahamas saw shark it's a very very um under reported shark i think um and um, what it, it what ha what was interesting is kind of preparing for the stream is i uh, opened up a bunch of different resources so this would be kind of cool to take a look at some new directions and you know see like some some new new websites or new resources that might be helpful um like like as we explore more sharks in the future so um and i think this shark is a good um test case for uh like comparing the resources and maybe seeing like hey you know what has actually unique pieces of information and then what is like basically copy and paste because uh, I, I do think a lot of um resources like shark resources are copy and paste so um, but we'll start with our classic, uh, It Will Never Die, the IUCN Red List uh, for Bahamas Saw Shark, the entry for this species. So this is least concern with an unknown population trend living in the deep benthic water of, um, well, that's a very, that is a very endemic range of uh, the Bahamas, but um, I guess Bahamas in Florida-ish, sort of. I actually don't know where the international boundary is here, so... Um, let's see if we can zoom in on that. So usually, um, if there's like a bubble like this, it means that they located the species in, um, like, basically the center of the bubble, and then they're estimating or assuming it's going to live in, like, X amount of miles within the bubble, um, if it's like one or two species located. So it's really cool to see such a spotty tiny range um which further lends it this is maybe maybe it is rare i don't know like like that is really really small so pretty pretty wild so and uh what's kind of cool is i know the gulf stream does come around the straits of florida and shoots up here so it's kind of a cool fun fact i mean this is this is all tropical water anyway but uh it's pretty pretty interesting so here we go um, so least concern that's good um, why is it least concern 
the Bahama saw shark is a poorly known, possibly rare, medium-sized shark known for th from three areas. Oh, three! <laughs> Whoa. Okay, so yeah, this is let's say this is rare. This is rare. This this is a rare guy. Okay, known from three areas off the Bahamas. Extent of occurrence uh, of occurrence is estimated at around twenty thousand kilometers. Uh, square kilometers. It occurs on insular slopes at depths of 300, uh, sorry, 438 to 952 meters. And is, so Twilight Zone, this is a Twilight Zone shark, and is known from very few specimens, the last of which was collected in 1969. Alright, yeah, this is rare. This is the rarest shark we've ever talked about, I think. I don't think there's anything else. Because, like, there's sharks like the Viper Dogfish that, you know, you don't encounter um often but that's still i uh, but but it's i would say viper dogfish are still fairly common when you think of like you know it its habitat and how inaccessible it is so cuba cuba uh yes so actually um so i've, I've never been to cuba but uh cuba is supposed to be like an ecological paradise like like it's supposed to be like there's a lot of areas of cuba that are actually supposed to be like near pristine so um, fun fact there, never been, I probably will never get a chance to go, I don't know, never say never, but, um, but yeah, fun fact about Cuba, so, uh, like, cause I think Cuba being as large as it is, um, and is sort of just like, uh, it's, it's, I don't think for an area as large as it is, it has as much impact, or has had experience as much impact from people, and I think there's still areas that are, like, just really not that well-known. I mean, I mean, they're, they're well-known, but, like, they're not, like, like not that disturbed. So, I guess this is what I'm trying to say, is that, is that they're not that disturbed. So, um, I've heard, I've heard that Cuba is an ecological, like, parts of Cuba are very, very, um, like, near pristine, so... Correct, you can correct me if I'm wrong, because, like, I, again, I've never been, so I don't think I'll ever be able to go, <laughs> but, like, I've heard, I've heard that about Cuba. Um, let's see, there are no deepwater commercial fisheries in the Bahamas, and, nice, and the lack of records likely refle reflects a lack of surveys in this habitat. Since it occurs outside the depth range of current fishing activities, it is not suspected to be taken as bycatch anywhere in its range. Population trend is unknown for the Bahamas saw shark, although it is suspected to be stable based on the levels of fishing effort within its range. Therefore, there is nothing to infer or suspect population reduction at this time, and the species is assessed as least concern. That is super cool. That also makes me really happy, because this is, um, you know, the Atlantic is an area where there's quite a few sh sharks that are not doing really well, and it makes me very happy to know that there's a saw shark that people just don't run into it so that's that's that that's really nice so let's see what else we got um let's see i don't know if there's gonna be most records are from between andres and cuba with one off grand bahama and one to the north of the bahamas in u.s waters population detail hmm Marine deep benthic, habitat and ecology in detail. The species reaches a maximum size of 81 centimeters total length. Uh, presumably lycotrophic viviparous, but nothing known of its biology. What is lycotrophic again? Let's look that up. I'm actually really curious what that means. Em oh, embryos develop without a specialized vascular exchange organ and rely solely on the yolk sac for nutrition. Okay, so gotcha. That's what that means. Very curious about that. Uh, no threats? That's actually really cool. The species occurs outside the death range of current fishing activities and therefore is not suspected to be taken as bycatch. Very cool. So there's no trade. Uh, yeah. Wow, no conservation actions. Images. There's probably nothing. Uh, well, let's just click on this. Nope. Okay. Uh, let's click on worms. So worms, just fun fact, is the World Register of Marine Species. 
Um, I think it's like basically a catalog of everything, but it's not like a species profile of everything. It's it's li it is literally, as far as I understand it, it's a catalog. You know, so which is helpful in a lot of ways, but um, as you can see, there's no there's no profile here. So, but Worms is a pretty big name, so um, it's a funny. I mean, I guess it's an appropriate name for a, a marine species thing because there's a lot of actual worms in the ocean. Uh, that is one of the most important biodiverse groups in the ocean, but it's not talked about a lot because <laughs> they're not pretty and <laughs> they're not big. So, <laughs> but anyway. Oh, yeah, good good point, Roy. Uh, Viper Dogfish has more info, too. Yeah, it's it's very... Uh, it's kind of wild. Like, I, 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 it's weird because it's like... There's a part of me that really likes rare species like this. Like, I feel like we're on, on the trail of discovery, which is a lot of fun. Um, and then there's part of me that's like, oh, I wish I, wish I had some more, more detail. So, um, let's see. So this is a... Oh, Compagno. Um, the famous Compagno, 1984. Uh, FAO Species Catalog, Sharks of the World. And he has this illustration of our Bahamas saw shark. So let's see how big this can get. Nope, that has nothing to do with anything. Let's go back to the image. Open link in new tab. Nope, sorry, that's actually probably not what I want. I want open image in new tab, don't I? Open image in new tab. Okay, well it's not too, too much bigger. But what's really cool, and what fits with Howard's illustration, is that bulge. Like, like that, that, uh, right there, kind of where, like, the barbels are. Because uh, I don't think the other saw sharks really have that feature. Like, 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 kind of just like that little, that bulge, um, in that area. That's pretty interesting. So, let's see what else we got. The fins are interesting. They have, they're a little bit, um, a little bit of a falcate curve for the dorsal fins. They look like they're equal size. Um because I think our Japanese saw shark didn't have such curving fins. Hmm, don't know if I could see anything else in this illustration, so. Let's check in the chat. <laughs> worm cool, but worm icky. Yeah, that's how I feel too. Did you know that some worms bite? Uh, actually, I, I think, um, I think actually polychaete worms are becoming more popular. I think Blue Planet did feature those worms um, uh, on, I think Blue Planet 2 had those, but um, in Virginia, there's a worm called the blood worm, which actually bites you. If, if you, you know, just like, yeah, it's, it's not, I mean, it's small, it's a worm, but it's still, I do not want to be bitten by a worm, so. Um, how I care, I thought it was distinctive. Yeah, good call and good eye, because I think I think it is. I think you're right. Like like that that uh, that bulge in the rostrum. So let's see. Uh, we'll get out of worms. I think there's nothing really to add to ICM Red List, so I might close this. Um, and we are. On, let's go see fish base. Good old fish base. Let's see if fish base has something to add to this. So uh, we got Prisiophorus, uh, you know, like we talked about last, um, the last saw shark stream. So it means uh, Prio saw, forest uh, means carer or barrier. So the bearer of the saw. And uh, Prisus is also Greek for sawfish, it's funny. And then Shredderi. Uh, so patron of not identified, but almost certainly in honor of American ichthyologist William C. Schroeder of uh, Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution. So this is the Schroeder, the famous Schroeder uh, of uh, Bigelow and Schroeder. Uh, I've talked about Bigelow and Schroeder a couple times on the stream. Um, they wrote Fish of the Gulf of Maine, which is an amazing, amazing book um, on um, North Atlantic wildlife. So that's actually really cool. There's a shark named after him. Um, usually it's not good practice to name sharks after, or name any species after people, but I mean, this, this person deserves it. I mean, he's a very, very important figure in fishery science. So let's see what we've got. Yep, a world expert on contributing to fishes. He, he, he was, yep. 
Um, nothing new. Uh, ovo, ovoviparous. This is interesting. I wonder if this, this term ovoviparous is used synonymously with lyco, what was it? Lycopathic viviparity? Lycothop as <laughs> Whatever the term, I got excited about looking up and I can't remember now. Um, I wonder if that's used syn synonymously. Probably would not be correct if it is, but embryos feed solely on yolk. Let's see. Yeah, I've got no new information on him. Um, let's see, and this is the only picture. All right, so fish base is not showing us something new. So let's go over here. What is this? This is the Smithsonian Tropical Research Institute. Uh, so this is something we've never seen before. This actually looks really, really cool. So let's see what the Smith and Smithsonian is awesome. Um, so let's see what Smithsonian has to say on the Bahamas saw shark. Now this is a slightly different illustration. Oh, and this is kind of a cool high resolution map. Let's do it. Okay, I guess that's high resolution. <laughs> oh, this is cool. So do you know what this is? Um, I'm assuming the red dots are the actual collection sites for the species, and then the yellow is the um, alleged range of the species based on the habitat it's collected from. I, I swear that's probably what is going on on this map. So. Actually, all things considered, it's not a bad map. It's not a bad map. It's got important features. I can see Tampa Bay, you know. Yeah, it's not a bad map. So. This is actually kind of like... <laughs> yeah, this is kind of like early internet. This does remind me of, like, the good old uh, <laughs> 2000 Comic Sans Evis Dot. Yeah, the, this is nice. <laughs> uh, let's go back. Um, now this is a really cool image. Oh, here we go. Um, 13, la lar sorry, 13 large teeth before one pair of barbels, 10 after, 5 gill slits on sides. So, what's interesting about this image is you can see, this is a little bit different from the first image. Um, you can still see the bulge, it's a little bit slighter. Um, it, it's it's not as distinctive here, but you can still see it. Um, and the eyes are enormous. Um, and actually, do you know what's really cool, guys? Is like the uh, just how that eye is drawn. That really really looks like um, this might sound gross, but that actually really looks like a dead shark eye. Like um, from uh, when I used to work in I used to work in the uh, fisheries collection at the Virginia Stream Marine Science. Um, and we had a lot of we had a lot of specimens like like the crocodile shark that we had, um, but some specimens I don't I don't know why this happens, but the, this this kind of weird eye shape or coloration where it's like you have this white space and then the black um, that's not like a living shark eye that that's that that definitely looks like a dead shark eye. So I think this was drawn from a collected specimen, um, and I'm assuming this is pretty accurate. Um, just, just that, that feature is sticking out to me, so, um, if it is accurate, the pectoral fins are enormous, uh, that's actually a pretty, pretty big pair of pectoral fins on this species, and then the dorsal fins are still falcate, with a really cool, uh, sharp looking lower lobe right there, so, it's actually, and it's, it's cool seeing how the first and second dorsal fin are the same size, and there's no anal fin, so it's kind of like, um, dogfish, you know, like, that's kind of a cool feature that they don't have an anal fin. Um, barely any lower caudal. And then you got a little bit of a subterminal notch there. Um, even the upper caudal fin. Saw sharks are very, aside from the saw, like, the rest of the biology is really interesting. Like, these are, I know I said this for the Japanese saw shark, but these are very, uh, really, Re like if if this shark did not have a saw, it would still be quite a fascinating looking animal. Like like it's just very very unique proportions on, on this kind of group of sharks. So, <laughs> ooh, uh, one of the Moroccan sawfish, Oncopristus numidens, have enormous rostral teeth. Interesting. Um, oh, uh, Roy Roy, this saw shark is the only species of that unique fin shape. Ooh, cool. 
Very, very cool. Uh, Moroccan sawfish have a barb, like a fish hook. That's amazing. Let's let's look up this Moroccan sawfish. Oncopristis numidens. I'm very curious about this. Numidus? What is this? That's really cool. Is this... Is this a living shark? Or, sorry, a living sawfish? Wait a minute. Is this real? Oh, th an extinct. Sorry, I got really excited. Uh, how is this the one? This is crazy looking. This is super, super cool. Is this the one you're talking about? Dude, that is awesome. Fossil. Okay, this is it. So that is ex that is actually extremely cool. I really love the uh, the thorns on the back. Um, it's actually really cool that a lot of uh, skates. I think some stingrays, but a lot of skates actually do have thorns as well. Um, some sharks do. Uh, the bramble shark uh, has thorns. Let's let's take a look at this. Um, Brucus. You know what? Bramble shark might be a good one for next week too. Um, that's not one. Okay, yeah, wait, 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 we gotta, we gotta call this out really quick. This is not a bramble shark. This, this is not a bramble shark. What is this? This is, the, the, this is the problem with the internet. So, <laughs> um, okay. So maybe not, well, it's a little distinctive. I'm trying to find a good picture. Because bramble sharks have, like, um, very, uh, pronounced dermal denticles, so it's not it's not as extreme as um there's a cousin to this too it's not as extreme as this really wild um fossil species but it's still still really cool it's kind of a similar sort of feature um prickly shark is a kinorhinus uh, I forget what it is. Prickly shark. I don't know if that makes a difference. Uh, it's even less pronounced than a bramble shark. Okay. Hmm. Okay, never mind. Um, thornback ray. Uh, okay, yeah. So this is kind of. Just want to point this out. Sort of what I'm talking about with there's modern elasmobranchs that do have this kind of um, this dragony look, which is really really cool. So that's actually a nice. That's actually really cool to see this versus this fossil. Um, it's actually kind of a similar arrangement, like one central like like row of um, spines, uh, two. Um, two parallel rows, uh, a patch near the eyes, a patch between the eyes and the main rows. So one central row of spines, two parallel rows, a patch sort of not, it's not near the eyes, but it's sort of like basically a sort of a similar morphology, which is actually really cool. <laughs> like, isn't that awesome? Like that, you know, we have like modern dragon-like uh, elasmobranchs with us today, so. <laughs> um, Bowmouth Guitarfish. Ooh, let's check that one out. Nice! Oh, that is actually a really cool looking animal. Dude, that is super, super cool. Oh, good call, Roy Roy. That is awesome. And those are really prominent too, and I like I love this guy's profile where he's like he's got this like ridge back, and kind of like a robust body shape. That is, guitar fish are extremely cool. Now, if people confuse these with sharks, I'm I'm a little bit more forgiving, you know, because uh, this one this one is sort of like a curveball. <laughs> like if if you, if you're new to sharks, but um, I will say again, it has that distinctive ray-like feature where the dorsal fin is fused to the head, or sorry, the pectoral fin is fused to the head, and then all the gill slits are beneath this animal. So it's a it's a ray. It is truly a ray, but it I, I would not blame somebody if they confuse this with a shark because everything else about it looks like a shark. So um, that is super super cool. Very very wild looking animal. 
Good call on that. Ooh, I like this profile. And yeah, you can see, like, yeah, that's... It's, that underside, that is that is so Ray-like. It's like, you, you can clearly, yeah, you can clearly see the Ray stuff. So, and there we go, that's actually a good shot of... Are those the gills right there? Yeah, the gills right there. It's a really good shot of that, so... Super cool. Alright, good call on that. This thing it looks really badass. <laughs> Man, these are really cool. I, I remember when I was like a kid, um, I did a like uh, the Virginia Aquarium had like uh, a, an overnight program. Like you can actually do like a camping trip uh, where you like basically sleep overnight um, near near like the, the the fish tanks, which is a lot of fun. And um, there was a kid there who you know, really loved rays, and, like, I, you know, told him I really loved sharks, and, like, at the time, like, I, I'm, like, sharks are the coolest things ever, and, like, I, I didn't tell him this, because this would be mean, but, like, I, I just, at the time, I had no idea why someone would prefer rays to sharks, I, I never saw the logic in that, and then, you know, now, I, I appreciate it, like, like, I, yeah, rays are extremely cool, rays are beautifully cool, awesome animals in their own right, so, um, anyway, so back to our saw shark. <laughs> it's like a ray wanting to be a whale shark. Yeah, <laughs> it's like it's a, it's really cool that it's a completely different grouping of animals, but the coloration pattern is sort of similar. Like you know, like a dark base with like the the white spots. Um, a lot of marine creatures do this, which is uh. And not that that's not that specifically, but there's groups of marine animals that come from different evolutionary lineages, but they they have similar color patterns like bars or stripes. It's it's really I find it really fascinating how like animals of completely different um, lineages can actually have similar features. It's really really cool. Oh whoa, this might be a lot of information. I, I know I zoomed in on this, but let's okay. Do, 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 do. Uh, how is this color coded? I'm assuming that the red or the critical. Well, wait a minute. Hold on. I'm assuming that the red or the highlighted features are, are the critical features. Okay, slender, head greatly depressed and somewhat expanded laterally, snout very long, narrow, tapering, concave edges before barbels. Oh, guys. So this is the thing that we've been talking about, concave edges before barbels. So this is like the little bulge that um, we've been talking about. So this, uh, so Howard, I think I think you're absolutely right. This is a distinctive feature, both both verbally and then also your art. Uh, sorry for exile, but let me, let me open that up again. Uh, good call on this, you know, cause like I think you're absolutely right that this is something distinctive for the species, so. I just noticed, by the way, like, like, uh, you got the falcate look, too. Like, that is super, this is super, super good, so. Um, let's see. Pair of lawn string like Russell Barbels. I feel slits. Teeth very small, conical, alike in both jaws. Pectoral fins moderately large, so we, we were all observing that, which is really cool. Pelvic fins small. Two moderately large, equal sized spineless dorsal fins. Let's uh, compare this to our Japanese saw shark. Um, that was Pristiforus japonicus. Let's just compare this, because we talked about this guy a couple streams ago. And I just want to see... Um, it, there, were, there were better uh, pictures than that, sorry. Uh, I, I, I want to pull up the very famous... Actually, that's a, that's a pretty good picture. I mean, well, that, that's maybe a better picture. Actually, you want to, you want to, we want to see like, yeah, look at that. 
okay. This is a good picture kind of seeing, like, like emphasizing this difference. Um, just that concave bulge right there, and the Japanese saw shark is just, I mean, it's basically straight. Like, you can may if you squint at it, maybe, maybe, maybe there's a tiny thing there, but really, like, this is much more distinctive on the Bahamas saw shark. And then the fins are smaller compared to the Bahamas saw shark. This is actually really cool, seeing that these are both in the same genus, but you can you can still tell externally. And the eyes, because uh, the Japanese saw shark doesn't have like such enormous eyes compared to the Bahamas saw shark. This is this is really really cool. Awesome. Oh uh, no, no worries, Howard. Like like uh, let's just say um, like like I just saw your comment on deep sea setting, so. Um, oh, I'm interested in all the relatives, including chimeras. I just saw that comment too. So, um, uh, no, no, no worries on that, because even like like we still don't know a lot about the species. So I don't think it's super far fetched, especially since the depth range. Um, I mean, 458 meters, uh, twilight zone. A lot of twilight zone animals do make deal uh, deal migrations up to the surface. So um, I'm gonna guess this shark maybe doesn't do that, but, um, I don't think it's super far-fetched, so, like, I, 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 I'm totally cool with, um, just, just the, the, the setting with the, um, I, I, I mean, this, this is a great piece of art, and you just nailed the physical features of the species, and it's a rare species, so, I, I think fundamental hall pass on that, so, plus, this is a dark patch of water over here, so, like, I, I am going to take creative license and say this is the twilight depths from which it emerged, so that is, that is my, um, actually, do you know what? There is a really, really great piece of footage of a frilled shark, which is a deep water species coming into shallow water, and I hope I can get it on YouTube. That's not it. This is it. I'm pretty sure this is what I was thinking of. No. And in this next story, we'll see this 1.6 meter eel-like animal identified as a deep sea frill shark. Let's take a look. Okay. That's not it. That's not it. This is just puff stuff. There it is. Okay, check it out. Check it out. So this is a deep water animal. He's actually doesn't look like he's in a good condition, but this is a frilled shark swimming in shallow water. So this is a living, verified frilled shark swimming in shallow tropical water. So the music is not complimenting this really well because uh, this is, this is actually a really amazing prehistoric animal like prehistoric looking animal this is this this shark is wild um, this is such like a unique look uh, there, there's not that many hexanchi forms um, and there's really I mean I think there's only two species of frilled shark in the world um, there's this one Chlamydoslachus anguians and then I think there is the African filled shark if I'm not mistaken so pretty amazing species so oh my goodness so just wanted to shout out to that shark it will definitely be featured on a future stream so um <laughs> yes so oh i saw that clip was six years yeah yeah it's it's a really cool clip it's pretty uh pretty famous um and yes, uh, good call, Howard. It does. He does look like he's in distress. Um, just, just the way he's swimming. Um, even though deep water sharks are very conservative in their movements, like just that was a weird angle, and that did not look natural. So I think you're absolutely right that he was distressed. So, um, let's see. Back to this guy. I don't think there's anything else in this account although this was pretty cool i i'm shout out to smithsonian tropical research institute this was this was a cool little this was more information i thought we were gonna get so this is pretty cool let's just x out of that oh this is japanese saw shark um i think this is the profile on sharkreferences.com which we have this fao image um 
And we've got these... Correct position of the teeth. Oh, so these are actual... I think these are the actual teeth in the mouth. I don't think these are the rostral teeth. Right? Or, I don't know, actually. Wait a minute. No, actually, maybe they, they are the rostral teeth. Yeah, they do look really weird. Never mind. Because they are... Yeah, sorry. No, my mistake. These are these are probably the rostral teeth because they're so long. Never mind. Um, correct position of teeth. Oh, this is weird. What? So the caption, so the caption in this image is like the correct position of the teeth. So are these not dental bones? Are these teeth in the mouth? Teeth in the mouth. Teeth in the mouth. I'm assuming, because like, there's, like, there's, um, there's um, um, I know, I know, shark, like, a lot of, a lot of shark pictures have, have teeth like this, like, this, like, 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 when they're all together, together it, makes it makes almost like a pavement, pavement. So, I'm so I'm assuming that's what's, that's what's going on here, here. and these are the rostral teeth, so these are the ones in the rostrum, and these are the teeth in the mouth. I thought these were identical for a second, but it actually makes more sense since these are teeth in the mouth. What do you, what do you guys think? The two thin to be the mouth teeth. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so the, the long, thin ones are the rostral, and then the small ones are the um, ones in the mouth, which is really cool, or oral, um, which is really, really cool because that's a very unique tooth type. Like, just one um, crown, uh, so there's no, no um, what do you call that? Cusplets, uh, or no cusps, uh, no serrations, uh, pretty flat, all things considered. That's actually really cool. So you would assume that it probably eats shellfish for the most part. Maybe some benthic fish with, with some of these more, like, um, poking kind of teeth. But then again, no, because of... The <laughs> this animal's wild. No, because, like, yeah, the, the rostrum, like, bats everything like a saw, or, like, 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 or, like hits everything like a bat, and um, that this is these are for consuming fish. Never mind. So... I gotta say, guys, this this is such saw sharks are unbelievably unique. They're like 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 th this is a very complicated shark. This is a really complex animal, just in general. It's very very cool. All right, um, we'll put a pin in that. Hey, look at this! All right, here we go. So we got some three D. We got some X rays. That are here. Okay. So Smithsonian Institution and whoa. Okay. Can I zoom? Whoa. Okay. So this one is probably not as exciting as the rostrum, but this is actually really cool to see in comparison with um, the fossil that we were looking at. That doesn't seem like that should be vertebrae. Uh, let's go look at the, because that's so many. Um, let's go look at the rostrum. All right, here we go. This is super cool. Oh my gosh, guys, this is super cool. Okay, yep, totally on Dadly, yep, the long, thin teeth are the, the rostral teeth. Yep, without a doubt. I, I should have known that <laughs> to begin with, but... Oh my gosh, look at this! Oh, and this is really high resolution. Oh, that is nuts! Whoa, okay, this is kind of random, but like, look, I love, look at this feature right here at the very end. Like, these two, like, hooks right at the tip of the rostrum. That's really, really cool. Kind of like these terminal these terminal teeth. I think that's a really cool feature. That is gnarly looking. <laughs> oh 
that is super cool. You can, it's very subtle here, you can see a little bit of the bulge near the, um, the barbels. It's very, very subtle in this. And I wonder how much of that is the x-ray because I see like a very faint line here. So I don't know if that's like a, a skin flap here because there's a very, very faint line up here, but this is nuts, guys. This is really cool. Oh my gosh, you can even see, yeah, look at that. You can even see just kind of like some of the, um, I don't know if that's like the nares, but like you could see basically the nose or like 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 just see these um, apertures right here. And then this is sort of like, I believe in this cavity is sort of like the main like um, organs related to smell. And then the opening is here to, to the outside world. Uh, so it's it's a really huge cavity, but but as far as like what you can see from the outside, it's it's a small opening. And then oh gosh, you can actually see oh this is creepy actually. You can actually see the pupil here. So there's the pupil for this enormous eye. That's crazy. This is really really, and you can even see the denticles. What a beautiful image. And you can see the arches of like the the uh, uh, the cartilage, so the quadricranium, you know how it's like supporting everything. There's another pupil right there. What an image! So close to the fossil one. Yes, for sure. Like like good call. Uh, cl clearly see that bulge more. I can see that bulge more clearly now. Yes, yes. Big lens. Yeah, like like. It's really cool. They. Uh, uh, good call, Roy Roy. Like, like they probably do, and it actually fits with the fact that this shark has been taken in the Twilight Zone, um, and it's uniquely has larger eyes compared to the other one that we saw, like the um, uh, the Japanese saw shark. It's actually really cool to see that its physiology suggests its habitat, and then the habitat that this species was collected from is deep water habitat. Um, they haven't so far been found in shallow water, so. It's pretty cool how those two um, are lining up, like that that physical feature, and then where we actually run into it. So, oh, paratype. Oh man, I forget what paratypes are. Um, I should know this by now, but this is it's not the type specimen, but it's one of the specimens you can use to identify, like. It's one of the specimens you can use to identify a species. It's not the very first specimen found, but it is one of the specimens you can use to identify it. So if I found a random saw shark, I was like, I don't know what kind of this is, can I please take it to the lab? I would have to compare it to this species to verify it's a Bahamas saw shark. So, oh, sorry. Let's see if I can go in the bottom. Uh, ooh, oh wow, yeah, you can really kind of clearly see that bulge still. Oh, this is crazy looking. I know I said this a few weeks ago, but I've been I've been really um, kind of enjoying like more Metroid Prime Let's Plays. This this definitely has Metroid vibes. <laughs> like just kind of seeing these images, it, it totally has Metroid vibes. This is freaky. Oh my gosh. And Howard, I think you said it best, just like, I mean, it's so close to the fossil one. You know, it is it is unbelievable. When you think of, like, Cretaceous species, um, you think of, like, mammals, like, you know, there was not a lot of diversity. There was, like, these little shrews, you know, and that's basically it. <laughs> um, and then now, like, we have, you know, like, foxes and humans and bears and marine mammals, like, all this flowering and biodiversity, all these amazing crazy different types and then when it comes to sharks the evolution is very conservative it's just very like yeah i mean this is basically perfect and <laughs> if it's not broke don't fix it like it's it's really cool how conservative the evolution is for a lot of sharks um and for this kind of group in particular it's amazing that that's not there's not um it's amazing that this is so similar to the fossil like that's that's really unbelievable Oh my gosh, that's nuts. The eyes are freaking me out. Like, you can clearly see that here. 
Very, very cool. Um, I wonder... This, this is actually kind of freaking me out, so I might end in a little bit, but, like, I wonder what these um, features are here. Um, if you guys know, or future viewers, if you know as well, uh, please leave a comment, like, what these kind of fins or fans are here in, in sort of this um, this nostril area, this... this um, um, I'm sure that's a very important feature, but I don't know off the top of my head what that is, so... Super cool. Mm -hmm. Alright, so... I think... Let's see if there's other... I thought there was a couple other x-rays. Um, I don't know... I might not spend a lot of time on this one. I can't believe it's already 10.30. Like, this is a rare shark. <laughs> it's actually kind of amazed how much we've covered tonight. Oh, this is cool. So this is the tail fin. This is the caudal fin. So this is the second dorsal right here. Sorry. Uh, you can see wear and tear on that. And yeah, you can still see that, you know, really pretty concave shape. Um, clearly, because that's a lot of vertebrae. I, I I don't know if I'm right in this, but like that that almost kind of like surprises me how many vertebrae the shark has. Like, it seems like a lot, but I, I mean, and actually look at this. Like, it's cool to see you've got the vertebra right here, and then you have like this segment, like these arches. Uh, supported by the the vertebra, that's that's wild. That's unbelievable! Wow, this is so cool. Man, this is really cool. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see. Uh, what, ooh, is this the, uh, okay, I think we can actually get a really good, even though we can't find, like, a live image of this species so far, this is the mouth, here we go. What does, what do the jaws look like here? So there's the lower jaw, the Meckel's cartilage, this is the upper jaw. That's just craziness. This is a little bit blurrier than the other images we've been seeing, but you can definitely see that kind of row of teeth. Very complicated. Oh my gosh. Jaw process here. I might zoom out a little bit because it's just the resolution's not super great, but that's crazy. Uh, proportionally, kind of a smaller shark jaw uh, relative to the body size, I would say. Oh, man, this is crazy. And then you can see um, the vertebra, you know. I can't tell. I'm assuming these are like the gill arches right here, but I can't 100% tell. But I'm assuming that's what these are. This is unbelievable. Like, wow. I think this is our first x-ray, right? Super, super cool. Tiny teeth, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, let's see. I think... I think we essentially looked at these. Uh, this is kind of a new angle here. Now that's a pretty cool image. Um, I know it's not the clearest, but the positioning is actually really cool. You can see the upper jaw right here, the tiny teeth. 
And then the lower jaw. I, I like how squat the lower jaw is, actually, as a feature. This is a very compact looking lower jaw. Um, where the jaw in general is very compact. You know, like, like... That's pretty wild. Oh, actually, you know what? No, I'm, I think I'm being goofy. Because I'm assuming... Uh, this, is, this is the jaw process, too. Sorry about that. I'm being really goofy. I'm looking at one part of it when, you know, it's, it's such a complicated feature. I'm totally missing this part. Sorry about that. There's the arch right here. Yep, sorry. Yeah, that's that's the jaw right there. The whole that that whole big piece. That's the actual jaw. Yikes. These are uh These are pretty amazing images. These are these are pretty wild. Um I think uh, I could be I don't know if I'm seeing this correctly. I think those might be claspers right there, but I can't 100%. Unless that's the pelvic fin. That might be the pelvic fin. Yeah, it's actually kind of freaking me out. This is this is really really cool, but it's like too much too too many X-rays might be kind of like too creepy at at a point. <laughs> so, um, I think. That's a lot of pictures, wow. I, I didn't realize there was this many. Let's take a look at this, and then I might get out of the x-rays. Because that's actually a really good high-resolution picture. There we go. Oh, yeah, I just got <laughs> This is so freaky. What a we. Oh my gosh. Well, you can clearly see the enormous eyes right here. And then the teeth right here. Yikes. This is unexpectedly ghoulish. Also, the music is on point for this segment of the live stream. I, I think the music's a little spooky. And now it changed to casualness, so, oh well. <laughs> Gil sits right here. What a creature. <laughs> like, this is freaky. Like, so it's it's really not lost on me now that yeah, that's a Twilight Zone shark. That is a shark that does not spend a lot of time in the sunlight. It is it is creepy I mean beautiful, beautiful, but but uh those are big eyes. <laughs> this is really, really interesting. Oh my gosh. Okay, I think that's it for the x-rays. I'm just zooming to see if there's anything else. Uh, okay, 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 I think that's it. No more x-rays. That was awesome, very, very freaky. Uh, <laughs> you see those lenses too freaky. Yeah, that was that was a good little trip. That was That was... In the dark abyss. That was freaky. <laughs> um, okay. So I think what we'll do, because it's really getting close to 11, um, so I do want to spend time announcing a new, uh, or not announcing, because I, I did mention the art contest or art showcase earlier, but um, let's end with the Shark Research Institute and then plans for our new art piece. So, um, so Shark Research Institute has this beautiful full color illustration of this shark. Um, once again, uh, emphasizing that uh, rostral feature, and uh, the eyes are not too too huge um, in this particular illustration, but it does have the large pectoral fins, it does have the falcate dorsal fins, so um, and I think this is the official uh, drawing of the shark in Sharks of the World, um, or for shark identification guides, so pretty pretty cool. But uh, again, uh, Howard, I think yours is pretty on point for the species. And also, I think your eyes are probably better, to be honest, as far as the proportion goes. So, um, very, very cool. So, no offense, Mark Dando. I know Mark Dando is a very famous shark artist. But um, anyway, so. <laughs> Mark, Mark Dando, if you ever see the stream, please leave a comment. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, um... Let's see. 
Do, 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 do. Uh, they're talking about salt sharks in general. Color, uniform, unpatterned, light gray above and whitish below. It has darker brownish stripes along its rostrum, midline, and edges. Its pectoral fins are light edge, and the dorsal fins of juveniles have a dark interior edge. Okay. On near the bottom. Unknown behavior. It's a rare animal. Um. Oh, this is interesting. Okay, likely bycatch of deep water fisheries. This is a little bit different from what IUCN was saying. In response to urging by the United Nations General Assembly, Mexico was one of only a few shark catching nations that adopted a national plan of action for shark conservation and assessed the Bahamas saw shark as being endangered or threatened and in need of protection. So that's pretty interesting. So. Oh my goodness. Um, no information from US Fish and Wildlife Service. And this is just Google. So yeah, I guess we'll kind of end on this image. But uh, this guy, this this shark, uh, like like or this stream, this 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 was a lot more information than I was actually going into it thinking, because uh, we covered a lot of ground. Um, this is uh, this is the rarest shark we've ever talked about, um, but we still covered a lot of ground, which is super cool. So, all right, guys. So going forward. Um, uh, for uh, next, I'm going to be gone next week, so our next stream is going to be, what is this, April 3rd, so we'll um, get together on Monday, April 3rd, um, I think because like, uh, we'll, I'll, I'll, like, I'll be going out uh, to a place that there are sharks this time of year, um, if I'm really lucky, there's white sharks, but like that's that's really really rare. Um, but because I'm going to a sharky location, um, I'm gonna. Uh, I think we should. I think I'm gonna surprise everybody with uh, what shark we're talking about um, on our next stream, um, just in case I do run into something um, and might want to showcase that with maybe my own footage. So we'll see. So fingers crossed that we see something cool. Um, so I'll pick the shark for April 3rd. In the meantime, we should definitely do a new contest, um, and I'm going to leave a post on the Doc, Dr. Jaws Facebook page, um, and uh, and I think I think the Dr. Jaws Facebook is at Dr. Jaws, but um, I'll leave a post um, just detailing the new um, contest slash showcase. But I think the theme, uh, since it's going to be such a long time, uh, two weeks is going to be a while, um, I think we sh it would be really cool to do a showcase on prehistoric sharks. Um, so I think each person uh, watching a stream and who wants to participate, uh, just make a piece of art detailing one prehistoric shark, and please also provide its scientific name and its temporal range. So when, like, like, like what period it's from, and ideally, um, kind of like the date range, if you can, like 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 the date range, uh, as, as specific as you can get, uh, with like how many million years ago um, that that shark existed. Uh, so what I'm hoping to do, and this is, you know, I I, I hope I can pull this off. I'm not sure 100% yet. So it's going to be interesting as we get submissions. But I'm hoping to make something kind of like, sort of like a tree of life, except with our artwork um, of prehistoric sharks. I think something like that would be kind of cool. But either way, all you guys have to do is, um, if you want to participate, is just pick a prehistoric shark and make a piece of art uh, detailing what time period it's from, its species name, and then um, as specific as you can get with how long ago in millions of years it was. So I'll leave more details on Facebook um, as well. And then I think, this this shows my amateurness with YouTube. Like I think you can actually make a post on YouTube, so I will figure out how to do that so I can leave that up there for the next two weeks. Um, for um, uh, some of our frequent uh, people like Anya and Beth who haven't um, or maybe weren't here tonight, um, I'll I'll see if I can find a way to let them know as well. But say, thanks so much for watching. We're gonna have a surprise shark for our next stream on April third. Fingers crossed that we run into a cool shark uh, this weekend and that I can hopefully share some of that footage with you guys uh, for our next stream. So, but I'm going to try to make sure it's very scientifically accurate. <laughs> yes. Thank you. So, um, but yeah, 
Um, and now, uh, again, I'll just leave as many details as I can on Facebook or uh, YouTube. I think, again, there's, I think I should be able to post, like make a pin or post on YouTube. But anyway, um, thank you so much for joining me tonight uh, for the Bahamas Sh Saw Shark. Uh, it was an unexpectedly awesome and creepy, but in a good way, shark species. And, and like those actually were really, really wild. Um, and I think I might leave one in the thumbnail. Um, I'm not sure yet. Uh, like it's, it's a creepy shark. So... But thanks so much for watching. Hope you guys have a great rest of your week. And thanks again for being a part of the channel. And I will see you guys on April 3rd. So see you soon. Take care, guys. Bye. <laughs>